The novel coronavirus, COVID-19, has spread across the globe, devastating economies and causing panic buying. D-Herb CEO, A.D. Dolphin, recently sat down with Dr. Habib Sadegi, founder of the Beehive of Healing, an integrative medical center in Agora Hills, California, that specializes in chronic illnesses such as cancer and autoimmune diseases. A.D. and Dr. Sadegi discussed the COVID-19 outbreak, causes, possible solutions, and ways to help people maintain both physical and mental health during the lockdown. So we had our the people within the DRBS community email us a few questions. I sure. was wondering if you can absolutely tackle some of those. Okay, we talked about. What, what do you, well, someone's just asking, it's maybe a little bit of a redundant question, but uh, someone asked, what raw foods could someone eat to help them from Corona? Like, what do you feel like the best immunity foods out there would be? Maybe the top two or three. That those are, I mean, you, you can't go wrong uh, with, you can start with uh, things such as oranges. Okay. Right. Vitamin C. Um, vitamin C. You can start with kiwi, vitamin C, and phytonutrients, N acetylcysteine, glutathione. You could start with lemon that we've talked about. Right. Paying attention to the essential oil inside the skin uh, of that. What you can start with making smoothies, okay, okay. including kale, in including the cruciferous vegetables. Uh, you can, I mean, there's so many different things. Things, you can't go wrong because right. there is a whole orchestra to the extent that you have a very healthy diet, right? Mm -hmm. And you take your time and you include fermented foods. Right. You know, fermented foods such as miso, fermented foods such as sauerkrauts, right? right? Tempeh. Um, you know, these are some of the things that it's just an incredible so, so, uh, source. I mean, if you look at seaweed, seaweed has one of the highest sources of iodine. Right. We use iodine homeopathically. To Look, antibiotics started in 1947. Mm -hmm. What did we do? How did we survive before 1947? <laughs> that's a, that's a, a good point. People, right? That's a good point. That's a good point. So that's why when you look at all the mystics, you know, Hippocrates said, let your food be your medicine. Let right. your medicine be your food. Absolutely. Look around. If it's colorful, if it doesn't come out of a package, the chances are, I give you my word, it's good for you. <laughs> and it's going to boost up your immunity. I love that. So I, one thing I kind of noticed, like when you go in the grocery store, you can't find canned tuna, canned anything anywhere, but it's so many, so much produce there. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really, and we're in a situation where we all have to kind of take time out. So it's really an opportunity for us to eat healthier, yes. to get our life in order, to get, to get our health in a, in a, in a place where we can protect ourselves. So it's definitely Absolutely. a lot of opportunities there. Let me see. What's another question here? How do you feel like the stress, the stress level, is that going to help, is that going to lower our immune system? Yeah. Yeah. So research, we, we know that way early in 1900 out of Harvard, we know that the way that we relate to a stressful situation can determine our, the quality of our immune system. Two people. They go through the same experience. One person, it activates them. It's like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity. My God. You know what I'm going to do? I have a million emails on my that I'm looking at every day, that every time that I open up, it says, you got a million. I'm just going to go through these emails, and I'm going to clean it up to 100. Right. My God. So they're not stressed. Right. There's another person that they're going through this quarantine and care cocooning period, and they're glued to their, you know, news channel. Man, it's just like watching exorcism. And I'll tell you, <laughs> they're producing stressful hormones, and including aspects of cortisol that's lowering their natural killer cells, lowering their immunity. And they might never get coronavirus, but I'm telling you, they might get some other issue. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I love it. So just taking time away from the TV. Absolutely. Time, time. Look, TV is its the full name of TV. Let me introduce you to the full name of TV. It's called Tell a Vision. And it's not your vision, really. It's someone <laughs> else's vision. There you go. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me see what else we got here. So what do you think is probably, and this is... Well, they want to know, um, 
what can they do to keep a positive attitude to help maintain, you know, that this everything's going to be okay? I know meditating. What what do you do at this point in time? Yeah. <clears throat> so I usually, as a physician, I pay attention to my body. So the first thing, most human beings, first thing when they wake up, mm -hmm. they go to the bathroom, they're going to pee, they're going to poop, right, mm -hmm. before they eat. Right. Most human beings, really. Right. Unless there is dysregulation. So I do the same thing. I get a piece of paper. Right. I go sit somewhere. And we've talked about this. It, I've talked about it as a tool in the Clarity Cleanse. It's called Pew 12, Purged Emotional Writing 12 Minutes a Day. I, I'll just ask myself open-ended questions. How am I, how am I feeling? Right. What's present for me? And then if I'm afraid, if I'm frightened, if I'm worried about what's going to happen to my kids, or what's going to happen to my practice, everything is shut down, you know, what's going to happen to my patients? I got three patients right now, you know, that I'm worried about. And one of them is in Ventura County Hospital. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and she's in um, on oxygen mask and she might be intubated. All of that, man, it's in the bandwidth. I write it out. And I'm here to tell you, there's something magical that happens. What you reveal, you heal. In the process of writing it, and then right afterwards, I burn it. My God, it's sort of like I had the biggest dump. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm I cleaned love out. Okay? And I learned this from one of the mystic poet, Rumi. Mystic poet Rumi, the 12th century uh, Persian poet, that's what he used to do. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of the biggies like Edison, they, mm -hmm. they did that every morning, right? Because it allows you to empty out, you clean out, you have a lot more bandwidth to be able to deal with your life. You get far more creative. But no one teaches us that. Wow. Unless you're in a higher level. And I've had the privilege of working with some of the, you know, some of the most elite that they've started companies and they're having larger conversations. And these are the skill sets that I've put in here in this book that I teach them and they become very successful. Wow. I love that. I absolutely love that. Okay. So we already know that coronavirus is, is you know, afflicting our lungs and making mm -hmm. it very difficult for a certain percentage of people to breathe. Are there any lungs exercises that we can do, like, you know, during this time to help improve upon our system? Yeah. So the, the way that the coronavirus, com let's say, comes in, it goes into the sinuses, through the mm -hmm. nasal cavity, right. through the mouth and so forth. And then in the sinuses, it replicates once it replicates to the point that it's uh, there, there's a lot of viruses, then it kind of goes down and it could affect the lungs. And it's our response to the coronavirus that produces chemicals called cytokines that creates the lung injuries. And it could push us into um, difficulties and it could cause death. So a good exercise to do, most people are unaware, is to be able to sit straight Mm -hmm. And when you breathe, make sure that you breathe from here and here. So, because when you open up, you flatten the lungs. When you flatten the lungs, my God, you just increase the blood flow through here. One of the things that no one tells you, but it's as scientific as the article that I presented. Right. If you're just sitting around, all you need to do is just, if you could just hum. Mm, humming. And it, it produces um, nitrogen dioxide. And one of the things that it produces as a chemical, it's a vasodilator. And it increases the blood flow. It's so effective that when you hum, you actually feel itchy around your nose and wow. around your lips. But no one teaches you. You know why? Because there's no money. If they could package it <laughs> and sell it, my God, man, you, it, would be, it would be like TV ad um, as you drive. There right? you go. You know, if you are in a, you know, in a place that you could do some stretching exercises and so forth, you can do that, and it's very effective. Awesome. What is another good question here? What do you think the outcome of this is going to be? Um. <clears throat> Are you, is it going to be mandatory vaccinations? Are they going to try to really push that on us? And the ideal of the chip inside of our body, that's, yeah. that's my, my only question when they start talking about that, what else does the chip do? You know, uh -huh. what else can the chip do? How is it going to affect us? Because our bodies, at least from what my, my perspective is, our body's not supposed to have chips in it. Yeah. It's a foreign object. That's right. So the idea of ionizing the sky by having various different technologies and ionizing, you know, um, 
right down here, then you have a grid. And once you have a grid, then, then you can have uh, you know, artificial intelligence, then you can locate everything, then you can you know, have self-driving cars, and there's really no privacy because you're living inside a grid, and a grid can be controlled. So um, what, what I, the ideal scene, uh, not that what I'm worried about, but the ideal scene and what I'm meditating and what I want is that for us as a collective community, as an intentional community to come together and to understand the connection that we have and to understand that our freedom is our human rights and to value our human rights as an individual and as a society. Wow. Is there anything, can you give everyone some information on how to find you, where they can locate you at? Sure. So I'm Dr. Habib Sudeghi. Uh, H-A-B-I-B-S-A-D-E-G-H-I and um, the center it's called Beehive of Healing so Beehive is spelled with one E B-E-H-I-V-E-O-F as in Frank healing.com beehiveofhealing.com the social media for instance such as Instagram is at D-R-H-A-B-I-B-S-A-D-E-G-H-I You've always been someone that I look to for information, and I appreciate you coming down and sharing this with us. It's my privilege. Thank you, and thank you for your quality of listening.